Coinbase is looking to acquire Turkish Bitcoin exchange, BTC Turk, for about $3.2 billion. It's one of the oldest crypto exchanges uh, founded in 2013, and they have a decent amount of users, about $4 million. Uh, so we've seen Coinbase moving in a few different markets, international markets. They're talking to an exchange down in South America about acquiring them. I think it's Brazil. Now look at this exchange in Turkey. Uh, so far, Coinbase is uh, like it's key user base has been within the United States, uh, but they are looking to move international, which would confront them with Binance, which is the largest exchange uh, by volumes and by users. Uh, Binance has been all over the world, and it used to be a pretty common headline to see them just jumping from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. I haven't seen those headlines too much recently, uh, but Coinbase is kind of on the opposite route. It really focused on the United States, and now it's going out and acquiring these exchanges, or at least trying to acquire them. Another backstory here is the decline of the lira, which is the local Turkish currency, which has plummeted over the last year. Uh, the government there has been doing everything it can to shore up the lira and make it a stronger currency for the local population. But uh, from what I've read is that Turkey has been dollarizing very quickly. Uh, local Turkians, I don't know how you pronounce it or what you'd say, people from Turkey Turkish people. are Turkish people, I guess. Uh, I they are selling their lira for dollars. And crypto exchanges have done really well there because you can move in and out of a local currency and into something like a stable coin that is pegged to the dollar very, very quickly. Uh, Jen, I want to throw a story over to you and get your take on it. Yeah, so we saw Coinbase really ramping up their overseas relevance, right? I believe that they acquired 2TM, which is the owner of Mercado Bitcoin in Brazil. And we talk a lot on this show about inflation in Latin America. And I wanted to touch on the financial state of, of Turkey. And I'm so glad you brought that up, Will. I didn't actually realize what a dire state it was in. So Turkey's consumer price index for food and non-alcoholic beverages showed a rise of 70.3% year over year for March. And to put that into perspective, there's this plum that the Turkish people uh, traditionally enjoy at the beginning of spring. It's the beginning of spring now. And I was reading that a two kilogram bag of these plums now costs $50 when the average minimum wage for people in Turkey is $290 a month. So it's no surprise to see that people in Turkey are so bullish on crypto when we think of it as a hedge against inflation. And it's no surprise to see Coinbase, Coinbase going after these acquisitions. I think we saw Binance have a lot of regulatory issues in a lot of different jurisdictions. And so it, I think it's smart when we see um, exchanges who have made it big in North America, not actually go and trying to get all of those licenses, but scoop up um, an exchange that has made a name for themselves. They already have the licenses. They maybe are already playing nicely with the regulators and then they can gain their foothold in that way. But Zach, I saw your hand go up. It's been a while. I get to do a fact check. On, fact check. Here we go. Fact check. They Ooh, didn't actually buy 2TM yet. They're reported to be in talks uh, or reported to be near to a deal. So it seems as though some of these talks are happening in different jurisdictions around the world. Uh, the broader point stands, though, and Jen, you're certainly right. Other exchanges have been doing this as well. We had FTX buy a Japanese exchange called Liquid. We have other people looking to stand up sort of local outposts of a global crypto exchange empire. And Coinbase doesn't want to miss out on that. They don't want to miss out on that trend. I think they're trying to identify promising markets. Certainly, you know, Brazil, Latin America is kind of popping. Certainly, Turkey is popping for a number of the, the bigger uh, economic issues that you highlighted there. It's going to be interesting to see who might be next. Is there someone in Africa that Coinbase is speaking with? Is there someone else in Latin America, Latin America that Coinbase is speaking with? That's the reporting I think that we're going to be doing coming up to see if there are other similar deals that are reportedly in the works. But right now, nothing is closed. we got two ones that have been reported as being talked about. It's going to be interesting to see if Coinbase can seal the deal here and get some of that growth that you know shareholders on the public stock market seem to covet a lot, right? We had the NFT launch in beta yesterday. Uh, Coinbase is in, is in growth mode. They're looking for whatever can juice that stock price, what can, whatever can pump up uh, exchange volume so that uh, you know Wall Street analysts view them more favorably going forward. So it's going to be interesting to see if they uh, end up you know planting their flag in different uh, countries around around the world. It's going to be interesting interesting to see who's next. Uh, Will, I'm going to toss to you for uh, last thoughts on this one. Oh, oh no! Well, oh, we no. can't hear you. Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm back. I think we're just going <laughs> to see Coinbase continue to add 
uh, into to more jurisdictions going forward. Like Binance gobbled up a large part of the globe, and that had its trade offs because they've had to hop from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. They pissed off a lot of people, to be frank. Coinbase has gone very slowly. They've made sure that they've crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, and now they're ready to grow and have a lot of the capital to be able to do it after going public in the United States. So I'd expect to see more of this happening going into this year and into next year. Yeah, big picture. You know, this is a global economy, a global technology, but it, it exists within you know national frameworks. Like that's why there's a Binance US, and that's why there are these local outposts of these global brands that can exist across borders, but they're still confined by sort of like national regulations and natural national uh, ways to go about business. So interesting to see it go down.